Hi, my name is Matt Sergliano, and this is the making of phaco emulsification cataract surgery. I'm going to pause the video right here. Now this was a group project developed by three other animators and myself back in 2010, and we were tasked with animating a surgical procedure of our choice. And we decided to do cataract surgeries, where the lens of the eye is removed and then it's replaced. But the first steps for any animation are to plot out each scene with an animated storyboard and then do a rough cut with the 3D models to make sure each scene flows smoothly. And this is called the animatic, which you're seeing on the right. Now in this first scene, Sarah Egner, the animator for this part, modeled and textured Otis, our human model. I should say that the animatic here is very rough, and here's what the near final Otis looked like with all the textures applied. And that includes eyelashes, eyebrows, and wrinkles. But how did Sarah actually get to this point? Well, with the 3D modeling software, Sarah first refined the model and then collected a bunch of photo references of older people. Then she composited those in Photoshop to make a texture, and that's the image on the top. And this was then wrapped around the model, along with a bump map which made the wrinkles more convincing. On the bottom you'll see what's called an ambient occlusion pass, which is a render pass we use to add soft shadows to the models in post-production. You can see the completed model of Otis in the final video, but I'm going to move on here. Uh, the next scene involves a fade out of Otis to reveal eye anatomy. And this part was done by animator Josie Conklin, who looked at all kinds of photo references for the eye. Here's some near final test renders of the eye as we cut away to a cross section. And as medical artists, we want our viewers to be familiar with the anatomy before we move on to the surgery. So in the final video, we included labels to point out each one of these structures. But how did Josie texture the eye? Well, here's some composite images she created in Photoshop after a bit of research. And the top shows the retina, or the inside of the eye, and the bottom shows the outside sclera and iris of the eye. That's the white part and the colored part. These images were then wrapped around the model to give them a realistic look. But that's not all. Normally, the wire mesh of the model is smooth, like the wireframe of the iris on the bottom left. So in order to create organic natural bumps and veins like you'd normally see on an eye, we added what's called a bump map, which raises parts of the eye in the final rendered movie. On the top, you can see a bump map used to make the vessels on the sclera, which is the white part of the eye, and that broke up the plasticky spherical model of the eye. Now moving on, this next scene was developed by animator Eric Small, and it describes how molecules begin to clump in the eye, causing the cloudiness that we often see in cataract patients. You can see our preliminary drawings, as well as some of the wireframes in an early animatic render, but what's more interesting is the series of visualizations we experimented with. At the time, there were no good references on the shape and size of the proteins that build up in the lens, and so we went through a few iterations. Here on the top, in brown, is an early experiment with a more rod-like crystalline protein, and on the bottom is a wireframe of the globular molecules used in the animatic. This, however, is the rough render of the final model we used on the top, and at the time, we were experimenting with a 3D particle generator, and we thought this would be the best way to visualize the rapid buildup of proteins in the lens. On the bottom, you can see a storyboard showing how a 90-degree turn was meant to simulate time. Now for the actual surgery, this part was developed by Josie Conklin and myself, and as part of our research, we sat in on a number of real cataract surgeries in order to get the procedure right. This first step shows how anesthesia is applied, and we struggled a bit in how to visualize the numbing effect, but in the end, we decided on a circular wave pattern that emanates from the needle. And here as well is also the ambient occlusion pass for those shadows that we see in the final render. The next step in the procedure is to open the anterior chamber of the eye, and to do that they use this odd little knife which we modeled in 3ds Max software and textured to simulate stainless steel. The wireframe's on the bottom, but I should mention that the orange in the center of the eye is actually meant to emulate the retina under illumination as if a light's shining down through and into the back of the eye. Now it should be said that we wanted to keep the camera moving to make it seem realistic rather than stiff and clinical. And this next part's a good demonstration of how we did that. In order to show the fluid in the eye, we took a low three quarter view to reveal as much as possible. And then we animated the fluid using 3ds Max deformation plugins and tools, allowing a sphere mesh to easily pass through the nozzle and fill the anterior chamber, as you can see in this wireframe animation. And there's also an ambient occlusion render as well. Now this following piece was a technical challenge and we puzzled over how we would show the removal of tissue above the lens. But after some thought, we decided that we would create a special texture for the sliced tissue and slowly reveal it as the instrument moved about the lens in a circle. That we did in Adobe After Effects, and you can see it in the final movie, but here's a near final video showing the sliced tissue before it was masked out. Finally is the most important part of this procedure. Our model for the lens was actually broken up into multiple parts, so when the ultrasonic instrument moved over it, 
we could animate those pieces getting sucked up into the instrument. We also added a submarine engine sound effect and a visual ripple to visualize the sonic waves as they hit the tissue. Here's a few more images, uh, the ambient occlusion render which gave the scene its soft shadows, and here's two more images uh, that we created with two different renderers. As you can see, each renderer generates a different look for the movie. And finally, this bottom image shows what's called a z-depth pass, which makes objects blurry the farther they are from the viewer, depending on your camera's focal length. Moving on, this is the finale. A new lens called the IOL is placed in the eye, and here's our storyboard and an animatic rendering of that. And here's another render of our IOL. Uh, it's, it's a lot prettier. We used a glass material and some high specular settings to make it look glossy. And now for the big finish, the placement of the IOL into the eye. This was a challenge given the IOL's shape, but we got away with just a minor jump in the final animation. So that's all for this video, thanks so much for watching, and please do check out the final version of this animation, and like and subscribe if you can. Thanks again.